to think of South Asia as being backwards, regressive, monolithic, particularly when it comes to the treatment of women and sexual or gender minorities. But one of the really unique and progressive aspects of South Asian culture is the legal recognition of a third gender. So I met many people who had um, you know, male names and dressed as men, had a mustache or a beard during the day, and uh, would shave clean at night, would wear a sari, would have a woman's name, and there was no sense of, of conflict with that. So this community of third gender folks in India known as Hijra have occupied an auspicious or even noble space within Indian society. Many of the Hindu conceptions of divinity encompass both masculine and feminine qualities at once. So as a result of this, this community, because of their androgyny, were seen to be closer to God. So following the period of British colonialism, any kind of sexual or gender nonconformity began to be seen as abnormal and even was criminalized. Their very behaviors and identities were now crimes. Members of this community began to engage in panhandling and sex work for survival. The area of my research looks at these complex intersections between stigma, gender, and mental health as they combine in the lives of people living with HIV in India. From in-depth interviews, I learned that Hijra experienced discrimination not only from healthcare professionals or their employers, but also from family members, neighbors, and sometimes even their own partners. I think the way that gender and sexuality is often framed um, in the Western context, if you're Choosing to live as two distinct genders, people will often think of you here as being confused or not being out or not having self-actualized or that you really haven't come into your own. And there's not that same sense of uh, need to live as one person all the time in India uh, or in South Asia at large.